Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Big Jiu Jitsu Show, a member of the Pod Bros Podcast Network. Don't forget to go to podbros.com and find yourself another podcast you want to listen to. And don't forget to check out our sponsors, Trap and Roll Soap Company, Tape Armor, Angry Joe Coffee, PR Performance, and you can find all that information as well as all of our, not all of our old episodes, but some of them on bjjshow.com. I'm Rob, and today I've got Stephen Tyrrell with me. He's from the Boston area, and we're going to talk a little bit about jujitsu and, I guess, whatever else comes to mind. So, Stephen, thanks for coming on the show, man. Oh, thanks for having me, Rob. Anytime. So, before we get started, uh, how about you give us and um, our listeners a little background on your uh, martial arts journey so far? Sure. Well, currently, I'm a blue belt. I've been uh, training for about three and a half years. I've been... uh, my Jim is the Connors MMA out of Norwood, Massachusetts, uh, John Connors. Um, when I originally got into it, uh, it was more to put my kids into it. Right. Um, my my uh, youngest son, my youngest, who's my son, um, turned five, and my wife and I always wanted the kids to have you know martial arts background. So she found a I found a gym around where we're at, and brought him in and and we brought him to his first class and at the time I was 43 years old and I said I was looking around I'm sitting there and I for for whatever reason I felt really comfortable at this at this place and I said to myself well I'm 43 years old if if I ever want to start why not start now when am I going to start when I'm 53 years old (laughs) so so I you know about a week later I think I jumped right in and and uh you know I've, I've, I've just fell in love with it um so you know that's sort of how I started and, and, you know, it, it, there's ebbs and flows and, and how, you know, everybody's training goes. And, um, but, you know, I never lost the love of it and I'm still going strong and, and, you know, hopefully as long as my body continues to, um, you know, be, be fine and then not get, not get injured along the way, I'll, I'll continue my training. So with, um, so starting at 43, you know, I've, I've run into a lot of people and, um, talking about getting them into martial arts and like, Hey, why don't you come do jujitsu and stuff? And it's a lot of, well, I think I'm too old or, you know, like you said, why not do it now instead of wait till I'm 53. And did you find it to be kind of like just a very intense as kind of going into it, but you said you felt comfortable. Was it a little different than what you expected? Were you expecting like some hard intensity or you wouldn't be able to keep up or anything like that? Oh, that's a good question. I I don't remember what I what I felt at that time in terms of, you know, anxieties prior to you know actually trying it. But I, what I what I do remember is that first month, um, just my body can completely just run down. Um, I remember coming home and 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 you know through the core just entirely just decimated, and I had to take, you know, taking a an Epsom salt bath or you know things like that to just, uh, you know. Uh, recover and um, but you know as as you go and the more your body gets used to it because I didn't I didn't wrestle in high school so I didn't have that sort of background where I understood sort of what the body was going to go through and and you know sort of a, the anxieties that you might you might face and so um, you know it took me you know four or five months or so to to sort of get my body in tune in terms of to figure out you know what was going to happen and and to start focusing more on the training and less on the you know on the recovery. Okay, well, that's good. I mean, you know, it's to a lot of new people, it's very, I think there is a lot of anxieties, especially when you start doing a hobby where it's like, uh, hey, I'm going to roll on the ground with sweaty people wearing funny pajamas. And you, there, there's a human touch aspect to it as well. It's something you got to get over. And um, like, it seems to me like teenagers don't care. Maybe like 12 years old, they care because I do have a couple of kids who are like, oh, I don't want to roll with him. He's a boy. <laughs> like not in like he'll beat me up. It's like it's a boy. I don't want to touch him. Correct. But but, uh, <laughs> but no, that's good. That it was just you know mainly getting into it, especially with no background. And you know, some of us did come through there. Right? We wrestled before. We did some other grappling art, and it was very uh, you know it kind of had an expectation. But I've never really like talked to somebody who had like no expectation, and then it came to that. And if you could like, what would you tell somebody to help them kind of? give them the push to get in maybe if they're having just a little bit of uh hesitations about jumping in even with you know like we didn't start in our set you know, like at 17 like we started later like what would you mm-hmm. give that what would you say to them maybe to help them out you know what i want anytime i do something in my life where 
uh, you know, I haven't done something and there may be some anxiety in it. Um, I myself went through the military when I was 21, at least through the National Guard. But um, So I think about it in terms of what I would do if I ever jumped out of a plane. And I remember thinking the same thing when I went to, you know, um, to basic training, which is, you know, this is going to be a scary thing. And uh, what am I going to do? And it's a whole different culture, the whole thing. And so, you know, I sort of go through my mind's eye what I would do if I ever jumped out of a plane, which I haven't done, which is it's not the only thing is that's scary about doing something new is that very last thing is, is the, is the, is the getting out of the mat when you slap hands and say, okay, that's the only other thing that, that, that's scary. Everything that you do up to that, you've probably done, you know, you've taken classes, you've put on, uh, you put on shorts, you've gone on a mat, you've been in a gym before, you know, you've talked to new people before. So, what I say is just just close your eyes, close your eyes and trust the process. And before you know it, you know, sort of fall into it. And before you know it, it it, it won't be new anymore. And and you, know, you figure out at that point in time, you give you a chance, you give yourself a chance at that point to figure out if you like it or not. If you're always going to sit there and say, well, it's something new. I have this anxiety. Um, I don't want to do something new. You're never going to get outside your comfort zone. And, and I think that if you if somebody really wants to sort of push their comfort zone a little bit, you know, just close your eyes and, and, and take that first step and everything else will take care of itself after that. Okay. Good advice. Very good advice. I've never really thought of it that way myself. I'm just more of the, well, might as well just do it. And whatever happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's that. You could do that too. Uh, then that, that actually seems to land me in more trouble than help me. <laughs> so, um, so when you start with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I I notice a lot of people also kind of just go in like real hard in the beginning. Did you uh, ever fall victim to that with a uh, fight? Oh, absolutely. Every... <laughs> so uh... absolutely. I think I, I and I probably still do. Like I said, I'm uh, you know I've only been into it three and a half years and going through some of the blue bell blues a little bit and and uh, you know I go too hard at times and and I, and that's not the type that's not the way I want to train. That's not the way I want my jiu-jitsu to um evolve um but i think you know you you fall victim to it it, depending upon your training partner i i nowadays i mostly mirror my training partners um but if a new person walks so if a a new person walks into the gym and and you know you start rolling with them you can see right off the bat you know that uh you, you know they're trying too hard so you sort of mirror them and you only you have to you have to dial it back a little bit and you end up um but yet that's when I end up noticing it the most. And, um, and you know, conversely, if, if I'm going with somebody that has a style that is very, um, you know, less, uh, less um, strength-based or, or something like that, I start to mirror that style. And, and, you know, I had one yesterday. I rolled for probably a half hour, 45 minutes with uh, one of my training partners, and he's got a great style. Uh, it's less a, less a competition style, meaning he's, competing against himself he's not competing against you and right. um when we were done that i was ready to go go more and it was it was an intense you know uh back and forth for the half hour 45 minutes or whatever it was and, and i realized that um that i was mirroring him and, and that's the type of jujitsu that i want to have not the sort of strength based trying too hard you know jujitsu that you see uh and then and, and sometimes that i exhibit uh when i'm on training no, that's, that's understandable. And the big thing too, is like, you know, I, I tell people to like, uh, I want to be able to roll like Helio did, you know, he rolled like three days before he passed away in his nineties. Mm-hmm. And if you burn it all out now, then what happens? Like, I still like to be able to, you know, type on my keyboard and walk. Those are two, <laughs> like two of my favorite things I need for work anyways, is like, um, I need to be able to, uh, be healthy. I need to be able to stay you know, moving and teaching and whatnot. But, you know, I, I give my hats off to the people who do have that intensity for competitions, but you know, the majority of people are just doing it because they love it. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm always saying, listen, I'm here so that I can go to work on Monday. Um, and you know, this is a hobby. I love it. It's a passion of mine. Um, my entire family does it now, but, uh, you know, I, I, one thing I don't want don't want to do is I don't want to burn out, and I think, um, you know, and and I do see those guys in the gym that 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 can go 100 million miles an hour, and sometimes under control, or uh, and, and you know, usually the competitors, and I think they bring a great, um, they a great skill set, a great training environment to the gym, 
as well, but that's just that's just never going to be, and I and I know that. So, you know, I'm going to continue the way that I feel, you know, that is going to help my jujitsu um, within my own sort of guidelines or, or the way that you know the way that my body built, the way that I think that it's not just body, I mean, too, but mentality. I just my mentality is such that um, I'm I, you know I, I'm only going to operate within that sort of parameters of of you know whatever intensity I bring at the, at, at at the time, and and I think that's the best way for my jujitsu to develop. It's going to be my my personal journey, you know. Yeah, and um, so you said you have your whole family involved in it as well. Um, mm-hmm. What what sort of uh, logistical, I guess, <laughs> um, challenges do you find having a whole family involved in a uh, in Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Do you guys get to train together in one class? You guys separated by classes, or like like how do you guys work that out? Well, the kids' class, the kids go to, so I have a, um, an eight and an almost a 10-year-old now, a uh, boy and a girl, a girl's the oldest one. So getting the boy onto the mats at five was, was, was pretty easy. Um, my daughter at the time, who was doing gymnastics on, on Saturdays, uh, when, the, when the kids' class, they had a kids' class on Saturday and Sunday now, but at the time they only had it on Saturday, it was a little, was a little bit daunting, and, and you know, she had this sort of fear of the mats, and um, I eventually enticed her by getting a new uh, origin gi for her. You know, uh-huh. I tell her how how amazing the origin gis were, and it was you know top of the line and the whole thing. And so I I had to buy her one of those. And I finally got her on the mat, and once I got her on the mat, I was like, okay, you're you're not stopping. Um, that's it. And so she, they probably at this point in time, they they pretty much don't have a choice uh, as to whether or not they want to go. And you know, I'm not. Uh, too hard on them if they want to skip a week or something. But my wife just started as well. My wife, um, who was the last person you'd ever think would do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, um, that whole fear of close quarters and touching and sweat and all that stuff. But, you know, she had recently gotten laid off in February from her job, and um, she decided that, you know, on her own, I didn't push her towards it. She, she knew all the guys at the gym at, at this point, all the women at the gym, and was very comfortable and said, probably pretty much the same thing. Listen, I want to do something that's outside of my comfort zone a little bit. Um, and she fell in love with it, it too. So she's during the day, she's going to two and a half hours taking, you know, the basic combatives. And, um, now she's just getting into rolling with people, um, outside of me and sort of the, you know, the black belt instructor. Um, but the way that it has been working is, you know, the kids have the weekend classes Saturday and or Sunday, my wife goes during the day when I'm working and the real challenge is, is sort of me and, and when my training happens and it, because of the way my academy has so many classes during the day. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I could go at 7 a.m. And a couple of times during the week, I'll try the 7 a.m. class because it's, I have more sort of control over that point of my, my schedule. And then um, I take, I work from quote unquote work from home on Friday. So I take an afternoon class um, and then I sprinkle in Saturday and Sunday, maybe on an extra day if it's a great week, you know. So it's not – because all the classes are sort of at different times, there hasn't been a logistics thing. Um, the, the worst part is, for the kids at least, uh, when every you – know, especially during the spring when there's soccer or softball yeah. or something like that – getting them to their games or their practices during the week. And at you know, which point my wife's always like, well, she puts the schedule out and she looks, she says, uh, looks like you're not going to be able to make open mat on Saturday and or Sunday, depending on the week. And she's looking at me and I'm like, are you kidding me? I've been waiting on like that kid when, when we were growing up at 10 or 11 and you know, the baseball weekend baseball game was canceled because of rain. And I'm like, I, I love open mat, you know, and, and Saturday's open mat at our gym is, is a little bit of, a lot of rolling, a little bit of talking, a little bit of technique, you know, the, the whole thing. It's, a, it's just more, one of my favorite days of the week. So that's pretty much the logistics aspect of it. Um, it's trying to work around the kids' games and their schedules and birthday parties and whatever. No, I understand that completely. You know, like from from working with kids, too, you hear that, like, oh, he won't make it because of soccer and baseball. And I'm definitely not the type that's like, uh, no, he only needs to focus Brown on Brown Belt gym trains. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, what were you saying? Uh, we- yeah, we have a brown belt in our in our gym who trains a lot um, at, at a couple of different gyms. He travels when, even when he travels, he's always training. For, depending, it doesn't matter where he's at, he's finding a gym. But he he had he found that uh, this year the same thing um, that he was all he had his uh, son's uh, lacrosse games were always on Sunday, so he was missing the game. So he ended up putting a, um, uh, a you know, mats in his basement 
in a back end back end of his garage and uh you know any given sunday you've got you know six to ten or eleven people down there rolling because they're running into the same thing yeah. so you know what you know getting in their role so it's it's been a big thing and that's been a help too you know as a lot of the guys have um you know are willing to change their schedule and, and whatnot to either come in on a time than because um, a bunch of us have sort of keys to the gym or can get into the gym or, or you know, PJ's home gym um, to get in our rolling during the week. And, I th- you know, I think that's that's been that's been great to work around schedules and things. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a dream one day. Matt's in the basement. I just got to see if I can convince <laughs> my wife about <laughs> I've got the uh, puzzles here that we throw out occasionally, and but that's about it. So right. with that many uh, people in your household, four people in your household doing jiu-jitsu, what's gi mm-hmm. laundry like? <laughs> Uh, every day after every, uh, after every, uh, training session. So, um, it, it just seems to work. It's, it's not a, it's not a big deal. Um, as soon as you get in the door, you throw the geese in the, in the wash machine and go about your, you can go about your business. So we're, we're always doing laundry. It seems like 24 seven here. Yeah, I understand that too. Like I feel my wife, God bless her. She does all the, uh, all the geese stuff for me and, uh, so I have geese at various states of either in the hamper, in the washer, or hanging dry. <laughs> and, right. And then when uh, like James from uh, Trap and Roll send me a gee, and she'll give me the whole, oh, hooray, that's that's really great, another gee. That's, <laughs> that's what we need. Like, Sorry, baby, I love you, but. You, know. you just got to get her training like I did with my wife. And now she's, you know, she's looking at spat, new spats and new rash guards. And she's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's. Not that it was a, a pain before, you know, when you have a spouse that, oh, wow, you're going to the gym again now, but now she's she's coordinating her schedule with mine and, yeah. you know, making sure that everything, you know, we get some of the new products or whatever. It's it's uh, it's been it's been great. Yeah, we um, you know, she originally was doing uh, the women's kickboxing class, not like the you know jazzer size or boxer size or whatever it was, like mm-hmm. a legit like the women got together and they worked, you know, Muay Thai and kicked each other and then. Mm-hmm. I told her, I was like, yeah, you know, maybe you should come try jujitsu and whatnot. And she, um, you know, she's open to like training, but also she's like, I don't, I don't know if I could, uh, handle a class with you and, you know, giving instructions and stuff and stuff like that. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I, I do get it. Cause we've joked, mm-hmm. like we get along really well, but if we ever had to work together, probably yeah. end up killing each other. And, uh, <laughs> so like, I kind of understand where she's coming from and, She's she's pretty respectful as far as um like she understands it's my thing I want to do it and she understands mm-hmm. it like you know obviously doing gee stuff and you know um it's very mindful of things I might like so she'll ask questions but uh maybe a little more convincing I think maybe if I get a my proper gym going like a you know on the business standpoint she'd probably jump in and roll but as of now since it's a club and it's just like my hobby you know I I, I don't push her too much. But she can punch yeah. me in the face, and she she does know how to do a rear naked choke, and has caught me with really? it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, like, it's not from you know going from like knees, hand slaps, or whatever. I'll be uh, what was it the last time she did? I was just sitting on the couch, and she came up behind me, you know, rubbed my shoulders, and then just sank it in like real Thank deep. <laughs> that's the only way she can get me, it seems. And as long as, as, long <laughs> as she recognizes the tap, you're you're good. Oh yeah, thank God she does. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> And there are pictures of her floating around in gear, so she has done it a couple times. But there you go, there you go. But um, so do you? You know, you guys have different schedules as far as uh, both of y'all train together. Do you get to train together in any classes? And um, what's uh, what's the uh, I guess interaction like with your spouse on the mats? Is it you know she listen? Does she listen to you if you like help coach her? Or it's kind of like my situation where she's like, no, nah, I'll I'll figure it out on my own. She does. Um, she's she's been great in that regard. So, <clears throat> like I said, I, I take a, a Friday afternoon class, um, and she goes to the same class. And our instructor will a lot of times pair us together. Right. Um, it, when she first started, she wasn't she didn't want to roll. So what our gym our gym, gym did something I thought was really great in terms of. Um, getting people to not only to come in and and but but also stay and that was to they sort of put together a gracie combatives type of course um where there wasn't a lot of rolling it was technique so that 
you know, rather than having someone come in and like, hey, great, you know, you're here, here's the, here's the, here, here's the instructor, you know, you're going to get into this class, and then you sort of do a technique and throw them into the deep end with rolling. Um, there is no rolling in this class, and it's really a beginner's sort of combatives course. And it was great for people like my wife who, you know, wanted to go outside of her comfort zone, but was really kind of leery of the whole rolling and grappling aspect of it. And so what my uh, coach did was he he was brilliant in the way he did it. He, he And he does this, you know, he sort of takes an individualized approach to each person. But with my wife, he took her and he he, he started rolling with her at first. And he, she really trusted him, obviously, as a black belt. He knew what he was doing. She He wasn't going to hurt her, et cetera. And he pushed her just a little bit. And then he had a role with me, obviously, because we you know we've been together for about twenty, twenty-one years now, and so there's that trust factor there. Yeah. Um, and little by little, he got her to, as you know, as she got to know more technique, she she got to know more people within the gym. Um, he handpicked sort of the the light rollers in the in the gym to to roll with her, um, and so he opened her up to you know just rolling with other people and, and seeing different technique. And then when she rolls with me now, um, you know, we'll be going, you know, we, we rolled yesterday for 15, 20 minutes or so. And, you know, at, at points I was like, okay, let's, you're, you're, you're using way too much strength, you know, because she's got that whole survival instinct going. And she'll yeah. listen and I'll say, why, why don't we do it this way? Why don't we try a little flow rolling? And, and you know, the flow rolling has always been um, a difficult concept for me to grasp. Um, but even working with her, and helping her through that so that she's using less strength, it, it, it helped me to really sort of start thinking about different ways to flow roll. Um, so and she recognizes the difference um, in, you know, skill level at this point, et cetera, and, and she's very open to different things. And, you know, we're still just experimenting a lot in terms of what, not only me, what my jujitsu is is going to be, but you know, obviously her. We're only doing three three months or so, but she's we we haven't had any issues really on the mats. It's just it's been it's been great. That's perfect. It's like uh, you know, a lot of people do talk about the dream, like oh, I wish I could find somebody who, you know, want to roll on the mat, you know, do jujitsu with me and understand. But that's mm-hmm. perfect that you that you and your wife have that, and you guys work well together. Yeah, we've always, you know, we always, we've always had that sort of aspect to it. There's been never any ego with the two of us. We met in, um, we met in law school, and and uh, and we moved in together, you know, a year, you know, not 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 too long after that, and during during law school, um, and a lot of people when they have even a you know competitive environment like that, they they can't be in the same classes, and her and I never had that. We we always could be in the same classes. It was always you know, support each other, um, help each other, assist each other, and, and not be envious of what the other person was able to accomplish. Um, and we, not only we did that, we went through business school together after that. So, um, and we'd be in, they'd put us in the same working groups at the, at the time. And, you know, we sort of were able to, you know, she has a certain role within a group if we're in a group of people and I'd have a different role and a different personality. And um, we always worked well together and it was never a competition. And you know it, it's it's never you know I don't want to say it's it's never there's never any sort of discord or there's not an argument or you know something like that because there are and, and yeah. you're going to have that over and over over the years, um, but we both come at it with the all right let's take a step back let's breathe both of us want each other to succeed this is just you know stress or this is just whatever it is and you know and we reset you're like you're right okay let's go forward so we've always been able to operate sort of in that in that in that manner. Excellent. That's very cool. So, um, so with your jujitsu as well, um, have you, have you competed? Do you like to compete or is it something you not really into? I haven't competed. Um, it wasn't something that I really, um, gotten into, into jujitsu to, to do. And I, I don't know, I haven't figured out sort of mentally or emotionally if that's going to be in my future. Um, I, I honestly haven't figured out if there is there's an anxiety or a fear as to as to competing. Um, I know a lot of my teammates do, and my training partners do, and I'm you know I haven't yet gone to a tournament to see how all that operates. And maybe at some point I will. I just you know I'm I'm my jujitsu is evolving and 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 hopefully getting better outside of that whole um, time element 
that you need, I think, to, to get ready for competitions. Um, I think at some point, maybe I will. Uh, I hear a lot that it, it, it's, it's a great help to your jiu-jitsu and just to the evolution of the of your skill set and, and things like that. I just, at this point in time, I, I haven't had the, the burning desire to get out there on the mats, but you know, I could see that happening in the next couple of years or so. Excellent. Yeah, it is to me, it's very helpful. And you know, I've had, I've had conversations about this before on the podcast, whether or not people think it's relevant to compete, to get better. And I, I don't, I really don't. I think it, um, for certain people, it helps them. Mm-hmm. But as far as the skill set and being able to teach it, like, the primary goal of any martial art is self-defense, regardless of, you know, what you're doing it for. That's why, you know, there's tournaments in every other martial art, it seems. But, you know, that's you against somebody else with, um, you know, with a with a rule set. You know, you guys are, you know, fighting or whatever in a controlled environment. But, you know, if you're, right. for me, it's like I started jujitsu because, well, yeah, I like competing, but I also wanted to be able to uh, – you know, take care of myself. So I feel like it's okay to do jujitsu and never compete because you're still going to get better at it. If you keep rolling with, you know, people who are better than you, it's a, it's, it's absolutely going to happen that you're going to get better even through just rolling in that whatever gym you're in. So it's not, not necessary. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, what the best part of jujitsu has been, um, obviously there's the, the physical aspect of it and the, stress relief and but it's been the it's been the people um and i've been really blessed with uh the gym that we found um the people at the gym the culture uh, like i said when i when i walked in i immediately which was weird for me i'd never been in, in in that type of a culture before um i immediately took to it i immediately took to the people and you know you walk in and just everybody is is you know everybody obviously has got their own personality and the way that they approach their jujitsu is different but it's it's like walking in in into your second less to you know in, in my travels i'm not saying i've traveled a ton but in the different gyms that i've been to and the um, I do the origin camp up in Maine, um, like, you know, with Tommy Gilligan, he mentioned on the podcast you had the other day. Yeah. Um, everybody up there is, is, you know, all the people that you see and you meet and you train with up there, they they all have one goal and it's getting better. And they have, you know, so I enjoy those interactions. I enjoy those new friends. And for me, I think, um, I think there's something in the back of my head that says, if I compete, I lose that aspect of it a little bit because now it's, now it's a real competition. It's not, Oh, okay. Hey, you got me. That's really cool. How did you do that? Um, can we do that again? Let's stop for a second and, and, and sort of work through that. And when the other person is, is just as almost, you know, almost as invested in you getting better as, as you are. And, and, and I think there's a fear in the back of my head that I lose that if, if now it's, if it's a real competition and, and part of that, that interaction with my training partners, um, is a big reason why I love jujitsu. Yeah, it's it does change the game up a lot because now it's um it's no longer like you said just going in there stress relief hanging out with your friends. It's I got to get ready for this competition and you know, for me thankfully I'd say 95% of the people I've competed against in a jujitsu are very cool. Very cool people and mm-hmm. if I get caught, I'm cool about it and they're you know not like right. ah, got you asshole or you know <laughs> Right. Like, it, grand, there's that five percent where I'm like, "Yeah, you're you're an asshole. I'm sorry." Like, <laughs> and then I feel bad. I'm like, "I lost to an asshole. This isn't how it's supposed to be." I saw the Karate <laughs> Kid, but um, right. but uh, you know, it's it does change it, and you know, that's a really your your outlook on it is actually very interesting because you know there are it's it's rare to find somebody who who does not compete, and like I said, it's not. You know, um, it's not a bad thing at all because, you know, back in the day, my mom and my two sisters tried out jujitsu and um, they're like, oh, we'll probably never compete with this. I was like, then that's fine. Like, at least you learn something, learn how to take right. care of yourself on the ground a little bit. And, uh, but yeah, no, that's, it does change it when I, now that I think about it. So, I mean, that's a really cool insight that you have. I've never even really stepped back to think about. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like I said, I, I'm sort of evolving in the way that I approach, you know, whether or not I'm going to compete or not. But um, you know, just stepping stepping back for a second and understanding, you know, probably what it would take for me, at least mentally, to approach 
competition. I think that's, you know, what I've been thinking about lately and, and, you know, whether or not I really want to go through those, you know, sort of emotion stepping on the mat and realizing that that's, this isn't, you know, this isn't why I, I, I train, you know, it was, it is a big, big self-defense thing for me. Um, and, but the other aspect is just the enjoyment I get out of it with, you know, with my friends, my training partners. Excellent. Do you find any um, overlap between the training you do and how you um, interact with people or like how you conduct yourself at work? Do you find any oh, overlap that at all? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, you know, I, it, not only that, I mean, it's just even with my kids, um, you know, my, I told you, I said I have an eight and, and almost a 10 year old and going through, um, going through watching them sort of develop in baseball or soccer or whatever it is. And I relate almost everything to jujitsu now because, you know, my mantra is it's all technique. And I wish I had understood that as a young kid rather than, you know, maybe you don't need to try as hard. Um, but if you focus on what's important, let's, let's get the swing down. Correct. I don't care. You know, I said to my son, I don't care if you strike out. I don't care if, you know, if you hit the ball or not hit the ball, what we're going to do is we're going to practice, you know, we're going to focus on the technique. Um, and you know, I'm a, I'm a lawyer, uh, by trade. Um, and jujitsu is, I, you know, you said I, because it's such a big part of my life and part of my family life. Now I, I relate almost everything to, to jujitsu. If I'm counseling a, you know, a younger associate or something like that. And, and they all, in, in my little world, they all know that I, I, I'm a, and I'm into jiu-jitsu and then I, and I train a lot. And, and, <laughs> and so when I'm giving them advice or counseling or something, I say, well, you know, this is just like in jiu-jitsu. And they're like looking at me like, dude, you really, you know, you're, you're kind of weird, right? <laughs> and I'm like, right, but, just, but just give me this. And, and, and at the end, they're like, oh, all right, well, yeah, that makes sense. And especially if I'm sitting there and I'm sitting there and I'm talking, I'm trying to give them advice and I've got this, you know, black eye because I, in training I got a, you know, an errant knee to the head or something yeah. like that. And so, but yeah, no, I, I mean, jujitsu is again, what for me it, it has allowed me to, or has forced me to focus on is, is the details, is the technique, uh, not necessarily the outcome. Of course, everybody wants to get the right outcome, but I think to get the right outcome, you don't really need, you shouldn't really focus on the outcome as much as the, the small steps to get there. And if you focus on that, you know, 99% of the time you're going to get the right outcome. Perfect. No, actually, uh, I do know the feeling because, you know, I started doing the whole, like, it's just like in jujitsu and my guys will be like, dude, shut up. <laughs> Please be quiet. Exactly. Like nobody cares, right. but right. they're also, they're also knuckleheads and they're scared of me. So it's, uh, a. <laughs> Not really. They're they're a good group of guys, but no, like like you're talking about, it's something you can relate to it, and you and you bring it into work, and obviously it helps for you, and obviously it works. So that's that's really good that you're able to take your jujitsu experience and put it in your professional life, and it all works out. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I haven't I haven't enticed any of them to get on the mats, but uh, you know, who, who knows? Maybe someday. I, I, I'm a firm believer that. Uh, you know, everybody should try jujitsu. I wanted to say everybody, you know, that jujitsu is for everyone, but yeah. you know, maybe maybe it's not. Um, but uh, you know, I think that getting on the mats would, you know, reveals a lot about yourself. And uh, you know, so maybe some people, I think a lot of people could use that and uh, you know, develop different skills in the same, in, in, in the process. No, I agree with you a hundred percent. Like until you really put yourself out there outside your comfort zone, done something physically exhausting, you know, you don't really, don't really know much about yourself or, you know, you find out who you really are. And, you know, like you said, uh, jujitsu may not be for everybody. It may not be everybody's hobby, but you know, if they try, if somebody tries something like that, they'll find out a lot about themselves. Absolutely. So, uh, before we head out, is there mm -hmm. any, like the floor is yours. You get to thank anybody, give shout outs to, like go nuts, like whoever you want to thank or <laughs> go ahead. I'll let, I'll let you say your piece before we head out. Sure. I, I guess I should, I should give a shout out to my wife, um, who's been putting up with me for, you know, 21 years now. And, and, uh, the last three and a half on this, on this amazing journey in jujitsu. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, she's sort of taking it up herself now as well. Um, everybody at Connors MMA in Norwood, Massachusetts, John Connors, Marcelo, Maddie, Jesse, Big Jesse, um, 
the coaches there at, at Connors. It's great. They have a great culture there. And if uh, I encourage anybody who's in the in the Boston area and uh, Norwood area, if if they want to go to a find a great gym or, or just st- stop in and, and a great culture on an open mat Saturdays or Sundays. Uh, definitely stop in. Everybody there is, is great to train with, and it's a very open and welcoming uh, gym. I also wanted to give a shout-out to James Hoffman, uh, Trap and Roll Soap Company. I know you know him very well. One of the most genuine guys I've ever met. Uh, funny, uh, great. He'll give you the shirt off of his back, and you know I'm really honored to be a friend of his. Uh, the Four Horsemen, the guys that I met up at Origin, uh, Camp, Roger, John, Samurai Jack, Tommy Gilligan. Um, you know, I know Tommy met, mentioned something in his his podcast the other day, and you know, we all met up at this camp um, a few years ago, and it, it you know, it really is a, such a bonding experience, and everybody up there is great. Uh, the Origin guys are great, and they put on a great camp, and and I encourage people if they could get out there to do it as well. And uh, you know, I think I think that I think that's it. Awesome. Well, we do appreciate you coming on the show, Stephen. It's been a good talk, and uh, enjoy all your insights and learned a little bit. You know, learned a little bit myself today. So, uh, thanks right. again. Thanks again for thanks coming for on. Thanks for having man. me, Rob. Anytime. Thank you for having me. So, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of the Big Jiu-Jitsu Show. A member of the Pod Bros Podcast Network. Don't forget to go to PodBros dot com and find yourself another podcast you want to listen to. And don't forget to visit our sponsors, Trap and Roll Soap Company, Tape Armor, Angry Joe Coffee, and PR Performance. And find some of our old episodes at bjjshow.com. I'm Rob, and we'll catch you guys next time.